This video continues my tutorial on time evolution for a particle in an infinite square well. Previously I calculated and represented the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian and then I defined an initial state and we uh, calculated its probability distribution. The next step here is to calculate the expansion coefficient c sub n but for good measure I'm going to normalize this wave function first or just double check that it's normalized. For background information on that I will refer you to another video in the video description. So I'll just provide a normalization here. Okay so this should provide a normalized version of psi zero. This is all a prefactor, a scaling, a normalization coefficient. And to obtain it, I take the inner product of psi star with itself and integrate, and then take the square root and reciprocate. So let's just double check that this is normalized. So this is just the inner product of psi u norm with itself that normalization integral. So if I run this, that result should be 1. And it says your answer is 1. And that's good, so I've, it's normalized. So that's the initial state that we'll work with here. I'll delete that because we don't need to see it anymore. And now I can simply use a for loop to calculate the coefficients. And before I do that, I'm going to make a storage vector for the coefficients. Here, since we have n eigenstates, we need n coefficients, and so that's the size of the vector here. And in the conjugate, I have to put the uh, individual eigenfunction. So it's the nth eigenfunction and all rows. So here's the inner product of the nth eigenfunction and then the initial state, the normalized version. The next thing to do will be to plot this to make sure we have a good result. Since these expansion coefficients could be complex, the way to visualize this is to plot the magnitude squared. And here I'm going to use a stem plot. Okay, that's looking good, except one thing I noticed because the magnitudes here are very large. I forgot to put in u as the first argument for my numerical integration there, so run that again. And that's looking better. This, this looks more reasonable for my uh, c sub n values. And I'll do some formatting here, copying and pasting from above, changing some labels. That looks like a much nicer plot. Uh, what you can see here is that by far the most represented eigenfunction here is the first one and the others have a much smaller contribution to the initial state. And that makes sense because if you think, okay, this psi magnitude squared uh, is this. The psi, recall, itself is a triangular function. And if you look at the eigenfunctions here, psi 1 is the one that looks most like, and it actually looks a lot like, the initial state. So we should expect that that is the major contribution here to the uh, initial state. And one other thing we can do with these expansion coefficients is use them to reassemble psi u0. Okay, so we'll try that. And we'll reconstruct them with a, a for loop once again, and we'll make an accumulator it's going to be zero. It's a, it's a vector of all zeros. And, and as the for loop goes through, we're going to add each weighted sinusoid or each weighted eigenfunction. So basically, we're going to reconstruct psi zero using this. We know the c sub n's and we know the psi sub n's, so we'll just weight them and add them up. And that's, an, again, an accumulator. And instead of reconstruct, I'll just call that recon for short. So now I'm making the for loop. And here I'm accumulating the value of psi u0.
I'll just run that to make sure we're not getting any errors. No errors, that's good. Now let's visualize this and see what happened. I'm going to plot my reconstruction against the normalized version. For now, I'm going to suppress the Y label and we'll just have a legend. So here's my size zero, and then you can see how my reconstruction went. I'll leave it up to you to think about why the reconstruction doesn't exactly look like size zero. But for now, I'm happy that, uh, that I have a nice way to calculate the expansion coefficients. Uh, I visualized them, and then I double-checked that my approximation to the initial state using these coefficients looks a lot like the actual initial state. So in the next video, we can move forward with plotting the time evolution. We'll calculate that and plot it. We now have enough. We know the expansion coefficients for the initial state. We know the eigenstates, and so that's enough information to determine the time evolution.